Hi, we're out on the range today, so please bear with gunfire here in the background. And today, once again, we're talking about shotguns in their role as anti-personnel, personal protection, home defense firearms. And what we're discussing today specifically is managed or reduced recoil buckshot. Now, a question that people immediately ask is, what are the manufacturers doing to reduce the recoil in this ammunition as compared to what I would call more typical ammunitions? And to answer that, I first want to discuss a little bit about the factors that go into felt recoil. When you're firing a shotgun, how much you feel against your shoulder or against your face can be influenced by many things, and I want to discuss four of them. First being the shape of the firearm, how wide the stock is, how it fits your shoulder, how it fits your face when you're getting a good cheek weld can make a lot of difference. Secondly is the weight of the firearm. A very heavy shotgun is going to be moved less by recoil than a very light one would be. The third is velocity. If the totality of your buckshot projectiles are a certain weight, propelled at a certain velocity, you'll get a certain amount of recoil. If you propel that same weight at a greater velocity, you'll get more recoil. The fourth factor is the weight of the projectiles. If you propel a certain weight at a certain velocity, you'll get a certain recoil. Propel a greater weight at the same velocity, you'll get more recoil. So how are the manufacturers managing the recoil? Well, they of course have no control over the size, weight, and shape of your firearm, so what they're doing is manipulating the totality of the weight of projectiles and or the velocity. Now let me see if I can illustrate that. Here's what I would consider more typical buckshot ammunition. Here's Federal Premium with flight control wad, 12 gauge, 2 and 3 quarter inch, double op buck, 9 pellet with an advertised velocity printed on the box of 1,325 feet per second. Here's Winchester 3 gun ammunition, 12 gauge, 2 and 3 quarter inch, double op buck, 9 pellet with an advertised velocity printed on the box of 1,325 feet per second. Remington Green and Yellow Box, 12 gauge, 2 and 3 quarter inch, double op buck, 9 pellet with an advertised velocity printed on the box of, again, 1,325 feet per second. But here's Remington Green and Yellow Box managed recoil, which is 12 gauge, 2 and 3 quarter inch, double op buck, 8 pellet with an advertised velocity printed on the box of 1,200 feet per second, 125 feet per second less, and one less buckshot pellet gives you a total weight of about 11% less. Here's the Federal Reduced Recoil Ammunition, which is 12 gauge, 2 and 3 quarter inch, double out buck 9 pellet, with an advertised velocity of 1,140, 185 feet per second less than these typical ammunitions. So that brings up some questions such as, manufacturers advertise velocities, sometimes aren't the velocities we really get, so what kind of velocities are we going to get? How much less recoil are we really going to get with this ammunition, and is it enough less to matter? And, very importantly, how much performance are we giving away to get that reduced or managed recoil? Well, we'll try to shed some light on those questions, and we'll start with some tedious chronograph testing. Normally I do chronograph testing from 7 yards, but when I'm using a shotgun and multiple projectile ammunition, I'm going to shoot from 4 yards. And I've got my Mossberg 500 with a 20 and a half inch improved cylinder bore barrel loaded with our Federal Premium which is double lot buck nine pellet. 1254, 1295, 1299, 1310, and 1161. Now let's try a different type of ammo. And now our Remington Green and Yellow Box, double lot buck, Nine pellet. Twelve thirty eight. Twelve twelve. Twelve twenty five. Twelve sixty six. And twelve thirty five. Now let's see how that compares to our managed recoil ammunition. And our Remington managed recoil ammunition is double lot buck eight pellet. Eleven thirty. Eleven sixty one. Eleven forty eight. Eleven twenty one. 
and 1155. And now our federal low recoil ammunition, which is double op buck, nine pellet. 1116, 1124, 1089, and a malfunction, 1104, and 1089 again. Well, I crunched the numbers and here's the results I got. With federal premium, a mean of 1283. Now that takes into account that the last shot I fired had a velocity of 1161 and that was so far outside the scope of everything else I fired that I threw that one out and off camera fired one more shot getting a velocity of 1258 and that's what I used to compute the mean. With the Remington ammunition I got a mean velocity of 1235. With the Remington managed recoil, I got 1143, that's 92 feet per second less. I'd say that's significantly less, and I could feel a lot less recoil. With the Federal low recoil, I got a mean velocity of 1104. That's 131 feet per second less than the Remington, and 179 feet per second less than the Federal premium. Again, a lot less, and I felt a lot less recoil. So with the reduced recoil ammunitions, I can feel less recoil, but how much difference will that make when I'm trying to hit targets, especially when I'm trying to recover from recoil and fire subsequent rounds? Well, I have my Mossberg 500 loaded with Remington 12 gauge, two and three quarter inch, double lot buck, nine pellet, and I have the six plates set up at seven yards. I'll shoot them as fast as I think I can hit, then we'll repeat the drill with the managed recoil ammunition and see how the times compare. Now let's try that with the managed recoil ammunition. And now our Remington managed recoil double op buck, eight pellet. Was there any difference? And if so, was it enough to make a difference? So how will our reduced recoil ammunition pattern? Well, that's going to have a lot to do with the individual characteristics of your individual shotgun, but there's a mentality that lower velocity shot shells will not have as much pattern entropy. Let's put that to the test. I've got the shoot and see target set up and I'll shoot it from 25 yards with our Remington 12 gauge, two and three quarter inch double out buck, nine pellet. See what kind of pattern we get and then see how our reduced recoil ammunition compares. Some of the pellets missed the shoot and see, so I have those covered with the orange pasties so they're more visible. I'm going to shoot one more shot from 25 yards with our Remington Double Op Buck 9 pellet and see if I can get a consistent result. This was our 9 pellet buck shot, but I only count 8 impacts, so one of these is a keyhole or one of the pellets missed the target completely. But we do see a fairly consistent result. So now I'll paste up these shot holes and I'll shoot from 25 yards with our Remington managed recoil eight pellet buckshot and see how the pattern compares. Now this was eight pellets of double lot. We have seven on our shoot and see, one up here that I've marked with another orange pasty. This is a very impressive pattern. Now I'll paste up these shot holes and we'll try one more shot of our eight pellet ammo. So now we have six impacts on our shoot and see. This looks like it does because that impacted a pasty that was already there. And then one just to the left and one just to the right. So we have a good pattern, a pattern that's consistent with our first shot. And from just this rudimentary demonstration, I'm going to conclude that our managed recoil ammunition holds a pattern that's just as good as, perhaps even better than, our more powerful nine pellet ammunition. Now I'll put up a new target and I'll shoot from 25 yards with our Federal low recoil buckshot and see how it compares. A result like this prompts the question, what the hell is that? Well, the big hole you see here is where the shot cup hit the target. 
In addition to that, we see six impacts, five on the shoot and see, one off to the left. So I'm going to infer that three of the pellets were still in that shot cup when it hit, and that is not the result you want when you're shooting 25 yards. Now I'll paste up these shot holes, and I'll fire another shot from 25 yards with our Federal Low Recoil Ammunition. Let's see what kind of result we get. And we got basically the same result. Six impacts on our shoot and see, and here's where the shot cup hit. This led me to off-camera cutting open one of the shells to ensure that it really did have nine pellets in it. Yes, they do. So I'll paste up these shot holes and we'll fire one more shot, but this time I'll use ammo from a different box and see if we get a different result. Now this is a little confusing and requires some interpretation. What we're seeing here is again six impacts and the shot cup hit. It just happens that it hit really close to where the first one did and knocked off a couple of pasties. It looks like seven impacts because it knocked off a pasty. Six impacts and the shot cup. This is not the result you want. You want a relatively tight pattern but you want it to be a pattern of nine pellets not six. If you wanted all your pellets to lump together and hit as one you'd use a slug. This result is also consistent with results that I've gotten with other ammunition in other places on other occasions. And it reinforces an hypothesis that I came to some time ago. Now let me explain a little bit about the terminology. Different people learn things in different ways, but the way I learn the scientific method is it starts with observation, curiosity. You see something and it makes you ask a question. And hypothesis is the expected outcome of an experiment or an educated guess, as some people will say. Basically, when you have your curiosity, you expect the hypothesis will be the answer to that. And once you form an hypothesis, you then set up empirical experiments to try to prove or disprove it. And it requires a lot of experimentation sometimes, so what I'm about to say is not a conclusion. These results, together with results I've gotten with other calibers, on other occasions, other targets, in other places, with other firearms, reinforces the hypothesis I came to some time ago, which is federal blue box ammunition is crap. Now it's time to discuss effectiveness. Sometimes more velocity doesn't necessarily mean more effective. Sometimes less velocity doesn't necessarily mean less effective. And to test our effectiveness, we're going to use the meat target. Now for those who haven't seen it before, the meat target is leather jacket skin followed by pork steak, pectoral, pork ribs, a bag of oranges to simulate lung tissue, more pork ribs on the back, four layers of t-shirt on the front, four layers on the back, and the whole thing followed by the new and improved high-tech police bullet stop. And I'm going to shoot it with my Mossberg 500 from 10 yards, which I have loaded with our Remington 9 pellet buckshot. We'll see what kind of effectiveness we get, then put together a new meat target, shoot it with the managed recoil ammunition, compare the results. Well, our double lot pellets did a lot of damage to the ribs on the front of the target, and where they actually hit a rib, shattered it. Also did a lot of damage to our orange lung tissue. Now, the ribs on the back of the target, where the pellets actually hit a rib, broke it. And some of the pellets were stopped by the ribs, some were stopped by the t-shirt on the back of the target, and some were stopped from the first through fifth layer of fleece. So 12-gauge double lot buckshot, exactly as we expected, is going to be effective. Now, we'll put together a new meat target, shoot it with our managed recoil ammunition, and see how much difference there is. And with our managed recoil ammunition, the results were very similar. Holes in the ribs on the front of the target, where a pellet hit a rib, shattered it, a lot of damage to our orange lung tissue, the ribs on the back of the target, where a pellet hit a rib, broke it. A couple of the pellets were stopped by the t-shirt on the back of the target, some made it through to as far as the tenth layer of fleece. Well, it's getting really late and we're losing a lot of light, but what's the takeaway from all of this? Well, first we see that not all buckshots created equal. We also see that not all reduced recoil buckshots created equal. Let me tell you an anecdote. A few years ago, I went on an agricultural deer hunt where centerfire rifles are prohibited, so we were using shotguns with buckshot, and somebody decided he wanted to bring reduced recoil buckshot. But he hadn't put any thought into how the manufacturer had magically reduced the recoil. Now for 12 gauge 2 and 3 quarter inch ammunition, a very common configuration is double out buck 9 pellet. But the ammo this guy brought was double out buck 6 pellet. 
And I don't remember what the velocity was, but it was significantly less than what would be considered typical, and it was not effective on deer. Now today, although we're talking about personal protection home defense, you still have to keep in mind that when you're using reduced recoil ammunition, you are giving away performance in terms of velocity or pellet count or both. But what are you getting in exchange for giving away that performance? You're getting reduced recoil. And in the ammunitions I was using today, I could feel a lot less recoil and it was very pleasant to shoot. However, we saw that didn't help me shoot any faster or more accurately. Now in comparing the patterns at 25 yards, our Federal ammunition didn't do very well, but our Remington ammunition had some really good patterns. And although it's less powerful on our meat target, the reduced recoil ammunition seemed to provide absolutely adequate performance. So although I wouldn't use reduced recoil ammunitions for deer hunting, in terms of personal protection home defense, does it have any application? And I would say yes. For people who are particularly recoil sensitive or who have greater than normal concerns about overpenetration, reduced recoil buckshot ammunition might be exactly what they need. Now, there's a couple of things I want to add to today's presentation. In talking about shooting at 25 yards and comparing patterns, I know there will be a significant number of people who will have an episode that my mother used to call a conniption, and they will send me hate mail telling me how stupid it is to shoot at 25 yards, and how superfluous it is to do the comparison at 25 yards, because in a personal protection home defense shooting, you would never shoot that far. There's a few things to be said about that. First, Although most self-defense shootings are going to be at short range, some of them will be at longer ranges. And I don't like to think in absolutes of what will or won't happen. And I don't like to use terms like that could never happen. Secondly, even though we're talking about personal protection home defense, there are people who will watch today's presentation and apply that information to hunting where you probably will shoot more than 25 yards, and I'm taking them into consideration. Third, we're comparing patterns. If we shot at five yards, the patterns would all be so small we really couldn't see much of a difference. You have to shoot at 25 yards. Now another thing I want to add is that today we were talking about double lot buck. It's the most common. But on the subject of personal protection home defense, there will be people who ask about number four buckshot. I happen to have some PMC 12 gauge 2 and 3 quarter inch low recoil number 4 buck. So in the near future we'll do a presentation comparing this to more typical 12 gauge number 4 buck. So until then, don't try this at home on what you call a professional, and thanks for watching the reduced recoil double lot buck video.